Indeed, we will never forget you. And one person who is ensuring that that does not happen is Boniface Mwangi, and he's joined by one of his besties, Kirosh. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. How are you? Very good. It is so good to see you this morning. Thank you for coming. Yeah, happy to you know, be here. I know when it rains, it, it, it slows everything down, but I'm glad that you no, came. No, that is too late working with us. Melancholy weather. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Boniface, always good to have you on this show, Thank as for always. Having us back. But you know, I, I would like us to maybe one day just sit under good circumstances, because something is wonderful. It is a sad time in this country. Yes. A lot of people have lost their lives, a lot of parents and f loved ones are mourning. Um, let's just start from the beginning. How um, Boniface for you on that fateful Thursday morning, everybody was looking forward to Easter, to a long weekend. Yes. Where were you, what were your plans and how did you react when you heard what was happening in Kenya? I was at an Isaac event, I was speaking there. So in the morning around seven, I was told, oh, those people are dying, like 10, 14, no, I think 14 people have been killed. And then I went in for the conference, and then around 11 I came out. There was the number, the toll was just rising and rising and rising and rising. And I couldn't understand that there was a siege at Garissa University. You know what a siege normally happens, that there's actually hostages involved, and there's either the armed force or whatever it is, or the police engaging the, the hostage takers. But that wasn't a hostage situation, it was a killing situation. And what really bothers me when I look back, is that the police responded, the GSC responded from Garissa, the Kenyan police responded with guns, mm -hmm. and they went in and locked down the university without going in. So what they did actually is to allow, those kids came to die, and they were allowed to kill for 10 hours, or as long as they killed before Reiki Scott came. Right. So there was no response from the government. Actually, the government was a witness to the killing, and the government helped, because those guys looked outside the window and said, oh, I saw Kuji. But they did help. How? But they did, I mean, in terms well, they of, did. There, they, there was many students that we actually had on camera here on NTV running out uh, and assisted by uh, security officers. They were running out, but there was just, there was just, uh, there was just a cordon off of the area. There was nothing like them going in. Actually, when I look back at that situation, I'm like, did you learn anything from Westgate? Because I think, I think there's something called urban warfare mm -hmm. or taking over uh, buildings, which I think our police need to learn. Because if there was actually like 10, 20 people in that particular area on that particular day, like Rekis Code, the, the killing would have been minimal. And now we look back at what really, really happened, and like, how have we learned as a country? But forget about that. The country is mourning. Right, exactly. And what we're trying to do is actually help the country mourn, and the country come together. We're in a very uh, tricky situation, that if we do not handle this particular issue very well, it may actually end up to ethnic violence against some communities. And that's why we're saying, let's all unite as Kenyans, let's mourn these people, and at the same time, let's hold the government accountable to ensure that there's a public inquiry to what went wrong on, in Garissa. Because to allow those guys for it only four people, yes. and then for so long, they shouldn't have been alive for that long to kill so many people. Absolutely, and a lot of people are still grappling with what happened, and and the fact that those were young Kenyans, young Kenyans with such a bright future. Those lives were cut short. Absolutely. That's actually the future of Kenya. Absolutely. Like Alex was the only child. His father sold cows to go to take him to school. Mm. His father took a bank loan to take him to school. The boy is dead. The father has nothing. He has actually nothing to live for. Because if you're a parent, you should never bury your child. Right. It is a tough, tough time for Kenyans. And that's why on this show, actually, we're asking all Kenyans to stand together. It is one of the most trying times in our history. And for us to stand with these families and to, and to say that we are, we are here and we shall not, we shall not budge. And, and of course, the issue of accountability is a big conversation that needs to be had. And of course, we will have that conversation. Irosh, for you, you're a brilliant artist. Of course, we'll take a look at one of the portraits that you did uh, this past weekend. But tell me a little bit about your own uh, sentiments as to what happened to those Garissa students. Um, it's first of all very painful. Uh, I have a sister who's in in college, so I can, as much as I wouldn't relate it like directly, but I can feel the pain because um, it could happen to any any one of us. And just how to pick up the pieces after that could be a, a lot hard for so many people. And I think that's why we need to give our all, at least help in whatever way we could to get this done. Okay. Yeah. Gentlemen, of course, um, both of you uh, this past weekend spent some time with the family of a fallen hero, Officer Tonoi. Um, tell me a little bit about from the day it happened and, of course, students coming back to, to Nairobi and, and what were the, some of the activities that you decided, Boniface, to take on? Where was your focus? Where did you want the limelight brought by you to be? 
So when the attack happened, actually, I, I was in discussion with some of my friends to do something about the list of shame. These people have been named and yes. can ensure that they, some of them are arrested and taken to court. So we were planning, we were in the process of planning actually a protest around that time. So when it happened, we were like, we can't do any protest, so let's chill out. Let's see how the government... Uh, this is a list of shame for corruption. Which we shouldn't forget. Right. right. list of shame of corruption. So we had planned to do a protest and actually tell the president you can do one, two, three things about corruption. Uh, so when it happened, there was a lot of anger and a lot of emotions. I did not do anything the first day, second day. Then by the third day, I think Oreo Kolo, who was called Kenyan Panit on Twitter, was very upset. She was extremely emotional. And she said something called 147 not just a number. Yeah. Then they decided to add me on a group where they're discussing how do we do this? How, what can we do? Uh, so Owa, who's called Maurice, came up with the idea of the website. There was a team of people, Naomi. There was a group of Kenyans, actually, who came together, formed a small group on Twitter. They were actually saying we must put names to these people who have been killed. Mm -hmm. Not only Garissa, but uh, those Mandera, those Mpeketoni, those West Let's just name names. But Garissa was actually the one that pushed us to, the, to that particular point. Right. Uh, what I'm best at is actually offline organizing. I can do things very offline very well. I'm a ninja mamta, so yeah. out there I can be able to do stuff. And I said, what, what, what about if we organize a vigil? And so we said, we're going to have a vigil at Freedom Corner. We're looking at the pictures actually right and now. And we said, let's bring Kenyans together and show, give them a place to mourn. By that time we were doing this, there was no, the government had not said they're going to have a three day of no mourning. The government had not said that they're going to, there's no condolences book anywhere that you could go and sign. There's no place you could actually go and express you what you're feeling. The only place that you could go to was Chiromo Mochari and Chiromo they all needed help it was water, soda and all that. So I said, let's get a place where guys can be able to mourn. And that's what we did with Freedom Corner. Uh, we got the county government to give us the space and then we set up the vigil at Freedom, Freedom Corner. It's been there for like a week. Mm -hmm. It's ending today with a concert. And so let's come and reflect what really, really happened. Let's put faces to those 147, the number, uh, the names of the people who died in Garissa. That's what we did. And that's what we're doing till today. But uh, I think uh, we, over the weekend, so along the way, the heroic stories of Rekha School came out, the people who died, those, those Kapro Masinde, those private officer, army officer, uh, parachute battalion. We're looking at Roche actually painting oh, uh, a picture there. Uh, and of yeah, course, we'll show that in just a that's second. That's Fotenui, and yes. then there's now Solomon. Those three people died, mm -hmm. uniformed officers who died. I said to go to the funeral of Rekha School, Tonui. So we traveled to this place in Bomet, a place called Chipalungu, very remote. There's no water, there's no electricity, the road is very bad. But along the way, we passed this palace of the governor of uh, Bomet, Isaac Ruto. Yes. He has a helipad, he has armed guards outside the door. We drive past that, we go to, to Nui's village, and we even met his father and his wife. And his father lost another son because of Al-Shabaab attacks. And so this is his second son? This second, he's losing his second son. He was actually a, a police officer himself. It's a family of people who just fight. As he said, they fight for this country, they love this country. They, they believe in that. Even they actually asked the government to actually allow them to employ some of their sons again in the police force to go and work for this country. Wow. And what the biggest shame for me is that Tonui, if you talk to his colleagues who I spoke to, is one of the best officers Kenya has ever had. Uh, bomb disposal, well-trained, rappelling into buildings, he's very well-trained. Why did he die? He was the first one on the line to go in. He was actually one of the first guys. Yeah. Uh, eight of them were shot. Three of them are still in hospital now. Uh, Tonui has been in the force for 18 years. For 18 years, my friend, if you are earning very well, you should be able to save some money. Tonui has been to America twice to be trained. He's one of the best in the country. One of the guys that if there's a war somewhere, you send him to, play, to go and die for the country and defend and give him a gun. But you don't pay him so well. Tonui has a mad world house. I did not show Kenyans everything. The shame of the latrine, the bathroom, there's just basically nothing. And the reason why he's living like that, the reason why his four kids have been left without a pension or anything is because the government doesn't pay them very well. The government that can afford to pay and pays millions to pay judges sitting allowance of 100,000 to go and sit in one meeting cannot even afford to pay a cop that 100,000. So if you look at the way, the life that Tonui lived, he sacrificed for this country, but that does not reflect the way his family live. And that's very heartbreaking because you see this man, they had put this carpet and this very nice coffin outside a mad world. We actually do have the pictures. I'll ask my director to just put them on the screen right now. A mad world house. And then you do this on a mental coffin and 21 gun salute. And you look and you're like, what will the family eat? What will the kids do? Mm -hmm. Now he's gone. There's a sole breadwinner in that family. What happens now? They lost a brother in that family. 
And so my pain extends beyond Garissa attack. I'm like, how well are we treating our uniformed officers? Those guys that you're celebrating in the case code who are given 500 shillings to go and die for this country. It's not fair. No, it's not. At least if you're going to tell me to die for this country, at least make it worth it. I'm serious. You made a point um, on, on, on a post that you wrote of the, the kind of split, especially with the, the politicians who showed up in helicopters, guarded heavily, got VIP front seats the before family the family. Sat, the family sat on plastic seats. <laughs> the family sat on plastic seats behind the politicians. The best seat was reserved for politicians. They came, they politicked so much that we begged stop so that we bury because we can't do that. They did that the Chinese gun salute. We can't do the Chinese gun salute after 6 p.m. You have to do it before 6 p.m. That to be burned. And the moment they were done like this, with the politics, they left. They never even went to the graveside. They never even saw the house where Tono used to live. Very they sat in the tents. They spoke about politics. They spoke about Ruto politics, Uhuru politics. And they left. And they had their police bodyguards who were poorly paid. And you have to move for them to be moved from the where the chopper is to where they have these SUVs, very big, nice cars. Of course. And it's a big shame. I don't think those guys... Because the people in that area, and here are the pictures that, of course, we've been telling you, we've been telling you about. And maybe you can just talk us through these pictures. Go ahead. That's Tonui's house. That, the reason why that thing has a red paint looks new, because before the barrier, they painted the roof of the house. The iron sheets are old. They were painted. The house on the right there, that's the kitchen. So to me, they had to bury him. There's that nice burial place where they. Bonifas, how did this make you feel, especially after after being there, after seeing everything, after seeing the family? I know you you, you talk to the family yes. and the daughter and everything. Walking away from there, how did this make you feel as a Kenyan? I was I was angry. I, I, even right now, I'm still upset. How you, you see when when there's a. Members of Parliament, I'm going to Mombasa talk to discuss Garissa attack. Uh, we do not see police as human. We do not see them as human because most Kenyans have very bad experiences with police. But you have some good police officers. Yes, we do. And Tunui was one of them. And what makes me feel so hard is that the president, this country has never lost a president through assassination. No, we've never. Never. Because, Thank God for that. Uh, yes. But because they are men and women who protect those people. They are people who do that. This country has lost few bodyguards. Uh, they lost bodyguards during Saitoti when the chopper fell. And this guy called George, who was killed on Kenyatta Avenue. Yes. And those people died sacrificing and defending. Who? So it's a matter of prioritizing. Now, if you're going to actually give someone a gun to protect us, why don't you pay him so well that he doesn't have to take a bribe? Because... Al Shabaab is in this country, not only because they're not supposed to be in Somalia, but because police officers take bribes to allow people to come through. Okay. Hold your thought. Of course, Kivush will talk about your beautiful portrait in just a little bit. But, gentlemen, you have a caller on the line who would like to contribute to the conversation. His name is Caleb. Good morning, Caleb. Good morning, Kobe. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for calling this morning. Do you have a question or comment? Yeah, first I want to co to say congratulations to my brother Bonfest there mm -hmm. yeah, for the good work he's doing outside here. Thank you. And uh, um, there's one thing that I, I, I'm just concerned with. Yes. And uh, I'm, I'm just looking at the list of those people who died in the Garissa University mm -hmm. and also those people who died before in that bus tragedy whereby people were shot uh, in that bus. Uh, yes, in mm -hmm. And I'm just looking at their names and I'm like, uh, this is not, is this terrorism or this is just persecution of Christians in this country? Because yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at that list and I'm like, uh, uh, Christians, we have been persecuted in this country. Number two mm -hmm. is that it is about our Minister for Interior, uh, Honorable Kaiseri. Yes, sir. How, how can they take a plane from Nairobi to Garissa going there to nothing, and yet uh, the record school does not have a, a, a plane to take them there? I mean, it's, it, it, it's so bad. It's a tough conversation that everyone is trying to wrap their heads around. And, and for us, that's why we're asking where are our priorities. And that's why here on AM Live Caleb, we're having this conversation because we don't want to also find ourselves having the same conversation the next time and then the same conversation the next time without realizing that all of a sudden we're just talking and it's people who are actually dying. 
real human beings, real Kenyans who are losing their lives because maybe somebody, you know, somebody somewhere is dropping the ball. Caleb, thank you for your comments. Yeah, there's also something that I want to speak in. Say that again? Uh, uh, also, I'm, I'm just talking about the record squad. Eh? Mm. Why don't we train many people in record squad who can help us? Because I was, I was watching them. They took like some few minutes. They are through with the operation. Right. And these are the guys of KDF and the, and the police. Why don't we train many record squad men who can help us? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Caleb. Thank you for calling. And, and thank you for that. You know, the frustration in Caleb's yes. voice is a representation I, I, of so many Kenyans. And I need to say something before yeah, we move on. I think the idea of persecution of Christians is not right. Okay. Uh, Al-Shabaab are criminals. Yes. When they go to Somalia, they kill Muslims. There are no Christians in Somalia. There are actually almost no Christians in Somalia. They're killing Muslims there. When they come to Kenya, they're trying to create religious division. Yes. So they target Christians so they can spark a war between Christians and Muslims. We're not going to do that. My daughter has a Muslim name. But she's a Christian. Right. And because I'm trying to say that we need to be, to be beyond uh, religious divide, ethnic divide. That's what they want. They, but that is what terror is what actually they, supposed to do. They're pushing us to yeah. fight among ourselves, yes, they to are. kill each other. And you cannot do that. Actually, Masharia gave us an excellent article in today's Nation newspaper that you should all read about. This is the time we get united. This is not about Jubilee or Kod or Uhuru or Raila or Muslims or Christians or Kikuyu or Kalenjin. It's time actually we unite. Because if we decide to actually fight among each other, Al Shabaab has a force of 3,000 people or less. They have been beaten, decimated. The reason why they are going to easy targets like a school, because they can't write, fight good warfare. They can't fight actually a normal warfare. Right. And so they want to push us to fight among ourselves, which you cannot do. Most Muslims are not terrorists. Just because it happened that this al Shabaab are using the word Islam or Muslim to fight their yes. ideological warped battle. It's actually very warped. But at the same time, uh, our government needs to find why our young people are attracted to Al Shabaab. Because if someone is going to leave this country and go and join a suicide mission, why are they doing that? Because this is a very ideological fight, and the government needs to engage in this thing in a very ideological manner. As, as much as they are working to radicalize is as much as we should be working to ensure that young people have something to do and they are being productive and they can get distracted. And they can trust the police. Absolutely. The word. We exactly. Trust, trust the police. The police. Kirosh, you are one young man who's decided that you're going to use his talent for the better. Tell me a little bit about deciding to honor to know his family with such an amazing portrait and it is right there on your screen. Um, so all of us have different gifts, different um, ways that we can do whatever we can. So for me, as an artist, I decided that it was worth to commit my energy, my time, my talent, my treasure to honor his family and um, just to celebrate his life because at the end of the day, if guys like him were not there, probably I would, I would be in a position to do the art I do. So. It was my gesture of um, thanks for his service and um, just giving out my gift in terms of talent. And the family was obviously so, so touched by this. that We saw you giving, um, giving the, the peace to, to his father and to his wife. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, even being there and, 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 and painting that portrait during the service and everything must have been very, very powerful. Tell us about, of course, you being there, the reason that you were there, and documenting this man's final journey. Why was that so, so important? And why did you bring Kirosh <laughs> with you? <laughs> uh, so I thought, I'm an artist. Uh, I run a space for creatives, and I thought, what can I give? Uh, okay. And so, yes, you can give money, which you did. Uh, we had raised some money online with Modern Cops. But I thought you can do much more than that. And we thought what about a piece that they can always look at as a family. And we did that. And we're going to do that for the other two fallen officers as well. And so we went with Kerosh to do that and to paint it. But the, the reason why I wanted to do that is that it's very easy to talk about people if you don't know them. Yeah. It's very easy to say, oh, I feel it and I feel you. But until you go to Chiromo Mochari and see a family trying to identify the same body and there are 10 of them, and the, the heartbreak and the emotions, you can never feel experience it fully. And I think Kenyans should actually get off offline, online, Twitter, Facebook, and experience reality. Because the reality out there is different from what you, the social media makes you feel. Right, yeah. The reason why Garissa did not hit us so hard, it wasn't in Nairobi. Our roots were not affected. I, it's not a, a, a familiar landmark that was hit. Garissa University is five. It was, more, it was Nairobi University 
the whole city would have been paralyzed. Absolutely. And A lot so, of people didn't even know Garissa University existed until that morning. That's true. Even yeah. I did not know that Garissa existed. I'm like many of those Kenyans. But I said, I'm going to go out of the way. I'm going to go to Chiromo Mochari. I'm going to go to the funerals. And guess what? There are more funerals happening this week. Uh, Solomon hasn't been buried. Koproma, uh, Kostabo Masinda hasn't been, married, been buried yet. I think when I attend the funerals, you can actually reach out to them. And then today, we have a very big concert that is going to be on NTV Live yes. from 4 p.m. at Freedom Corner. Uh, we have Peter Dere, Saudi Sol, Kambua, Juliani, Sarabi, Rabbit, uh, many, many. We have from Uhuru Park from Eric 4 to Naina, 7, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Atemi, there are like 23 artists who are going to perform today. Amazing. Uh, a memorial concert to just say goodbye to those we lost and come together for unity. I think Kenyans, this is a time we come to, we rally together as a country. Absolutely. Because if we do not rally together, we are going to break apart. And that is actually what the terrorists want. They want us to break apart and we shall not. And that is why we must keep having these conversations. They are tough conversations to have, but we must have them now before it's too late, before many more Kenyans lose their lives. Gentlemen, you have another caller on the line. His name is Roy. Good morning, Roy. Good morning. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you so much for calling. You have a question or comment from my good guests? Uh, just a few comments. Go for it. Yeah, one, I would like to thank Bortas Mangi. Mm -hmm and uh, every Kenyan that Thank has uh, contributed, you know, in yes. uh, consoling the family. Thank you. It's a very difficult time. Go ahead. Yeah, now, one thing I would like to say is that uh, in the conflict in Rwanda, mm -hmm. I remember when the inter attacked girls in their dormitories. Yes. Uh, they would want to separate the Tutsis and the, the Hutus. Hutus, yes. <laughs> but you find that the, the, the Hutu girls they refuse to be separated, and they said we are standing in solidarity with our Tutsi uh, sisters. Mm -hmm. And the Karahamwas will find it very difficult, you know, to kill their own people right. together with the Tutsi. Yeah. Now, my question is this. We have been saying that uh, let us not take this as a religious war. Let us not, uh, uh, I mean, fight Christians against Muslims. Right. Let us not let them divide us. Uh -huh. Yeah, let us let them not divide us. But mm -hmm. I, I have a question. Since the Garissa attack happened, yeah. we had, uh, when the Garissa attack happened, we heard that the Al-Shabaab was separating Christians from Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, the Muslim students. Yes. Yeah, the Muslim students. Mm -hmm. uh, why was it so difficult for them to stand in solidarity with their Christian fellows? I mean, that's a toughie, Roy, because none of us have been in that situation. You yeah, know, yeah, that, that's so tough to, to even and like try and, and wrap fear, your head around. Fear and even, paralyzes and even, you. And, and, even if you leave, and even if you leave that, mm. we have not seen the Muslim students that uh, were separated coming I mean, out but that, you in know, the open. Roy, I, I do have to cut you off because Good. that conversation is a tough one because until you are standing in that person's shoes, until you are there in fear of your own life, I really don't don't know if I, this I, is something that we can talk it, about it, just based on what happened in Rwanda. Because Bonnie? You, no, I actually agree with you, Kobe. You know, fear is a very paralyzing thing, actually. Even the Bible says fear is wrong, actually fear is bad. You don't start thinking about your religion when someone is about to kill you. I don't you. think you're thinking about religion. thinking, how do I stay alive? And it's, a, it's very human. It's a very selfish way. That's how humans survive. It's only the fittest and the fastest to survive because you want to run away as far as you can from trouble. And... I'll, I'll ask you back, when you talk about Christians and Muslims, and Muslims not standing up, this country, this year alone, seven people have been shot dead by police in peaceful protest. Guys have been beaten by police. I didn't see Kenyans standing up with those, ki with those people. Right. Our kids were tear gassed on Langata Primary School. I didn't see Kenyans standing up for those school kids. Because Kenyans, we are cowards. Uh, it's actually, we are all cowards. Most of us are cowards. We have fear. So in a normal situation where people are getting shot by police, and there's no Muslim or Christian, Kenyans don't stand up, they walk away. When there's a protest about salary, and you have 100 people in Kenya, you know, at a protest, and there are 43 million Kenyans, Kenyans don't stand up. So this thing about religious and Muslims is actually a lot of nonsense. Because right. if I'm afraid, I'm going to run away. And there's no why some of you never come to protest, you're afraid. And we can't take and individuals based on, you yeah, know, you can't. We cannot judge them. I think the judging may come later on in this aspect. And you're not judging those student leaders. Those, no, those students, forget about them. They're right. young and they were afraid, and that we understand. It is the Muslim leaders and Muslim community not coming together to even go in solidarity to those funerals. I think they should do that. 
they should actually reach out to and say and do a lot of work and to show that uh, Islam is not a religion of hate. Some of my best friends are Muslims. Same here. And so I don't see this religious thing coming in. And if you look at how those, some of those students died, because I'm looking back at it and I'm looking, there were many of them. They were rounded up and they followed instructions. Some of them came from Kisi, Homa Bay, Busia, Nyeri, Kiabu, Gatundu. And some of them have never had gunshots before. And like some of us in Nairobi where we hear protests and Kibera where we live, Kunakwanga na Vurga Vurga, some of them were hearing the gunshot for the first time in their life and it was continuous. You get paralyzed. If you've never had a gunshot before and all this is very continuous, let me not lie to you. You're going to pee on yourself, you're not going to move. You'll be told, jump, you jump. Go, you go. And that applies whether you're a Christian or a Muslim. So fear played a very big factor. Absolutely, and it still is. And Kirosh, I want to throw this to you. Yes. University of Nairobi this past weekend, students due to a transformer explosion really got uh, scared and there is a lot of fear mm -hmm. around and especially with young people. Mm -hmm. You are a uh, one man who expresses himself through his creative art. What can you say to, to young people who are right now afraid, who don't know what to do? How can they start to express this fear and express themselves? What is your opinion? Um, there are there are definitely many avenues for them to at least disseminate that that fear. Mm -hmm. um, I'd just suggest that first they accept all that is happening, then try get an avenue to express it. Um, I know that art therapy could help. We could do sessions well with that. Um, but beyond that, there's still um, a lot. And if it gets like really bad, um, they, we could need the help of counselors, maybe. Mm -hmm. And they are on the job, I can tell you that yeah, for sure. Yes, yeah. counselors are doing an amazing so, job out there. Yeah, I think there are many um, quarters that could come in and help. Mm -hmm. And um, it's time that all of these quarters rise up to the occasion and um, just show up, do what they can, and that will start the journey to healing all right yeah. we can talk about this for a long long time we have run out of time but we do have to say yes there is an amazing concert that's happening today from four to seven o'clock it is all the most amazing artists in this country who are coming forward of course to let the world know that 147 is not just a number it is happening at uhuru park it's yeah, a garissa corner. memorial freedom Gar corner garissa memorial concert it's going to be live on ntv okay so in case you yes, can't right here come to uh, Freedom Corner, mm -hmm. you watch it live. Uh, come with a lighter, a candle, a flower, and come in your Kenyan colors. Don't show a sign of unity, togetherness. We are one. This country is one. We make our politics, our tribe may divide us, but we shall not let terrorists divide us. Absolutely not. Yeah. We'd rather we'd rather argue let's, let's fight, here. Yeah, let's fight. Yeah, let's fight. Let's fight. Let's fight. Let's fight. Let's No, no, no. We're no. Kenyan. No, no, no. We're not letting them in here. Gentlemen, yeah. it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you for all the work you're doing. Thank you for documenting you. what is going on. It'll stand in our history so that our future generations do not forget. We really do appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Kiros, you'll come back and show us some more of your work? Most definitely. Will you do a portrait of Sheila Dibala <laughs> Live. Because <Live? laughs> yeah. you did that live. You did Any such day. a good job. Thank you. You did an amazing job. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And to the fallen soldiers, the families that are grappling with this, we, and to the soldiers and security forces who are out there right now protecting this nation, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, we appreciate you, we appreciate you. And we salute you. And we salute you, absolutely. And we want the government to really just stop and think about these Kenyans who lay their lives for this country. It is so, so important. It's a conversation that we will have and continue to have on this show until we find a good solution. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. All right. Today in history, let's look back so we can learn some very vital lessons for our future. And then we'll be right back after that commercial break.